Jordan Peterson does a really fine job analyzing the story of Pinocchio. The story of Pinocchio where a wooden boy becomes a real human being by the end of a series of traumatic adventures. And Peterson analyzes it as a, hu a human analogy, you know, analogy for somebody who is not truly alive and somebody who eventually has to cut the strings that control him, the fates that control him and push him around. And he does so by making conscious decisions for the good. If you want the whole analysis, you really should check out Jordan Peterson's various videos. I think he's done about four or five longish visions of this interpretation, and it's very well worth looking at. My point today is that I have read this book several times by Holling Clancy Holling. This is Paddle to the Sea by Holling Clancy Holling. And I have heard it um, criticized as being a boring story or a story where nothing happens. And I think it misses the point. Holling Clancy Holling has these wonderful pictures that go with the story. And it's a story primarily of a little wooden canoe that travels through the Great Lakes region and he experiences various different adventures. And the thing that strikes me about this story is that all of our stories can be boiled down to either journey or to battle. And you can say that a story is either a battle story where you face various conflicts and have to overcome them, or it's a journey where you go through a journey of different experiences that change you. And in the midst of that journey, you experience a certain loss suffering. The suffering or loss, though, brings about a, a gain, and the gain is wisdom, knowledge, and therefore maturity. So, for instance, uh, Joseph Campbell talks about the hero's journey, which is an interpretation of one of the one of the major stories that we have at our disposal, this, uh, the story of the hero. A hero is made primarily by leaving his familiar territory, and then going out into the wide world of the unknown to experience different things. And he experiences his nemesis and then um, loses everything. And then he emerges from that experience with new knowledge, new power, new wisdom to be able to face his equal and opposite. And um, after facing that final trial, he emerges, he apotheosizes, becomes sort of godlike because he gains a certain power or knowledge or wisdom that allows him to go back to his original point, his original place in the universe. And at that place in the universe, although it's his hometown or his original spot, he is now different. He is uh, wiser and stronger and more powerful. Joseph Campbell called this the monomyth. And it was a form for how the, the journey story works. And of course, there's battle in there. There's combat with your doppelganger and with your nemesis and all that. But that journey story, I think, is what Holling Clancy Holling is telling in this story of the uh, paddle to the sea. He may not have intentionally put that in there, but it's in that story. We have to put ourselves in the position of thinking not that this is just a block of wood that's carved into a canoe going along a journey, but rather that it's a representation of a human being, a type of person. You know, what do we mean when we say that a man has a, a, a heart of wood or that he's wearing a wooden smile or that he's as tough of, as wood? Or what do we mean when we talk about qualities of, of, of a tree or of wood? You know, strong, living ones, valuable, beautiful, but inert, not yet fully alive. And much like that Pinocchio story, this, the character at the beginning of this story, the little wooden man, is a homunculus. He's a, he's a, a non-living man, a little, a little man. The homunculus has to come alive. He has to be made fully human. And how does that happen? It happens by the experience that occurs in the journey, the suffering and loss that occurs in the journey. The Greeks had a saying, um, which was drasanta pathos, pathaimathos. And that saying meant the experience, the drama, causes suffering, and the suffering causes wisdom. So the idea is that by suffering, we gain 
wisdom. We, we, we become mature, we become fully alive. Without that kind of suffering, without experiencing the world, without going out in the world and challenging ourselves, we remain humunculi, little wooden boys, rather than true humans, true adults, true, true men. In this story by Holling Clancy Holling, the main character travels through the, the Great Lakes region. And it's a wonderful story, atmospheric story about the Great Lakes, you know, and you get a, a sense of the geography and this, this excellent um, 1940s or 1950s take on the culture of the time. But it's absolutely fascinating the way he brings up the image, for instance, of Indian culture. Because Native American culture, Indian culture, especially in the 50s and 60s, represented adventure and excitement and an authenticity that I think a lot of people at the time were already feeling was slipping away from Western culture. I don't know if we have that now because we live in a slightly different age. And in some ways, it's tragic to me that I think American Indians, Native Americans, have in a way lost that place in the imaginative world of young boys in America. Most young boys now, they're engrossed in video games. They're engrossed in movies. Their, their heroes are, if anything, Iron Man or Hulk. But they don't have heroes like used to occur in literature or in, in uh, culture in general, even though those characters may have been false. You know, I remember growing up thrilling to the adventures of Lone Ranger and Tonto. And even though I know Tonto was, uh, it, was not, it was an ideal that now has said, oh, that's not a, a good portrayal. Still, for, for my youth, I thought of Indians, Native Americans as being noble and valiant and strong and powerful and something that I really wanted to aspire towards. There were quite a few images like that in culture during the 50s and 60s, certainly, and even in the 70s, where the Native American stood for something that was pure and noble and as yet untainted by the corruption that the West seemed to have been suffering from. I think Holling, Clancy Holling's book reflects that Native culture, where his main character, his protagonist, the character that suffers most, is an effigy of Native American culture. He is supposed to be noble and valiant and virtuous and stalwart. But in the beginning, he's just a homunculus. He's something made of wood. And the little boy at the beginning who carves him, the little Na Native American boy, says, I want you to have adventures that I cannot have. Much like Geppetto, who says to Pinocchio, I want Pinocchio. I want you to come alive. And so he carves this beautiful little canoe and he makes it perfect. It's, it's, it's really quite amazing, the carving he does. But then he takes and he sets it on the hillside in the snow. And he says, the time has come for you to sit on the snowbank and wait for the sun spirit to set you free. Then you'll be a real paddle person, a real paddle to the sea. So the whole wish of the designer, of the creator, the little Indian boy, is that this homunculus that he makes, this little effigy of, uh, of a Native American in a canoe, he wants him to have adventures that he can't have because he is bound by the ordinary world that has crept upon him. The world of having to help his father and the business of the family and taking care of the traps. But he wants this character that he makes to roam farther than he can ever roam. And he wants him to have adventures. But ultimately, he says he wants him to become a real paddle person. Like, I'm a real boy, you know, like, like Pinocchio. And he wants him to come alive because of that, to be a real paddle to the sea. The journey then is started not by the little Indian boy. It's actually started by the sun spirit, the, the solar power. The same power that Prometheus in Greek mythology draws down and gives to humanity so that humanity can be alive. The solar power, which has always been associated with us, with God, with the divine, you know, the divine spark, the, the fire over the heads of the apostles, that divine spark then sets Paddle, the, the protagonist, sets Paddle to the sea on his journey by melting the snow. So snow is kind of like dead wood in this, that, that snow is inert. 
it's an image of the inert or dead life that then comes to life in the spring when it's melted and that begins paddle down the the trickle of water down to the river and down then to the various cups of the great lakes that pour one into the other but it's amazing that at the beginning there's all these titanic forces of fire and of water and of, of snow and um, paddle goes through encountering different characters along the way animals and humans and adventure along the way and all these different adventures that he encounters are like the the various impediments or the various monsters or the various hurdles that a hero has to incur, encounter as he goes through his journey the difference in the story is that paddle to the sea the little wooden homunculus does not choose his course he does not choose his own adventure he's driven by the current that goes around the Great Lakes. Now, this may have been a pure convention on the part of Hulling that, you know, he's trying to show the geography of the Great Lakes, and so Paddle travels that current that goes around the Great Lakes. That's possible, I don't discount that. But if we do look at it metaphorically, what this means is that Paddle to the Sea is driven by fate, not by choice. He doesn't choose where he's going to go, he's driven around by fate or the gods or the natural forces. And like the inertness of his wooden nature, he doesn't, he doesn't choose which way he's going, he's just driven around. That kind of represents a period in our life, a condition of human life, where a person feels like they're just driven around. They aren't taking control of their life. They haven't become a real paddle person. I mean, notice the irony in the name, paddle to the sea. It's paddle to the sea, and yet he's not paddling at all. He's frequently referred to in the shorthand as paddle, but paddle in a canoe implies choice and it implies dynamism and it implies action on the part of the, the navigator. Paddle to the sea, this character, doesn't have that. He's driven around by titanic forces, the current, the waves, uh, the animals. He's lifted out of the water occasionally by humans, almost like divine forces taking him out of his journey but he himself doesn't choose. And he goes through all these experiences that cause him to change as a character. Now you gotta ask again, if, if this is a metaphor and the wooden nature of Paddle to the Sea represents a certain condition of humanity, if humanity is supposed to suffer in order to gain wisdom, what would suffering for a wooden character look like? Well, you could say on the one hand, it would be being weathered by time and the elemental forces. It would be experiencing things that were threatening to wood, like a saw at one point, or a fire, um, or being crushed. It would be losing elements that made him unique, like his rudder or the paint on his sides, or being chipped by the experiences he goes through, or, um, eventually maybe even being broken those would be suffering that would then bring about wisdom and along the way we find paddle to the sea changes radically so that at one point eventually he's like this he's lost all of his paint he's lost his um rudder he's he's no he's been shipped and worn down and he's no longer the the bright fresh out of the box kind of character that he was before so that at the end of the story when he's fished out of the water after the, all these tremendous experiences he is um he's different than he was at the beginning and it's it's intriguing to me that we have at the very end of the story not to give it away totally but we have it at the very end of the story there is this character that shows up and Paddle has been rescued, and he is going to be restored by the men that find him. And uh, there's a character that shows up and sees all this happening of little Paddle to the Sea ha uh, being saved by the sportsmen. And it says, in the canoe, this character, the Indian, smiled. Once he paused in a stroke and rested his blade, for that instant he looked like his own Paddle. There was a song in his heart. It crept to his lips, but only the water and the wind could hear. 
You little traveler, you made the journey, the long journey. You know, now know the things I have yet to know. You little traveler, you were given a name, a true name in my father's lodge. Good medicine, little traveler. You are truly a paddle person, a paddle to the sea. And that's the end of the story. So by the end of the story, this little wooden character, it doesn't jump up and magically dance around like Pinocchio, but there's a transference that has occurred between the wooden homunculus and the last character in the story, who is this Indian in his own canoe. And so the wooden character kind of becomes the flesh and blood character who now is going to be making his own journeys in another realm. It's almost like, it's almost like the, um, the homunculus has transferred to the, the living character and now the living character is going to transfer to something else, going on his own way to the great ocean, the great sea. So by the end of the story, we have a story of suffering and experience and, and, and even of wisdom. It's not just a boring story or it's a story of the, of the journey of a human being. What happens to a human being when they go through all those journeys? What is the sea that we have to eventually reach ourselves? Is it, is it death? Is it heaven? Is it freedom? It's almost as though gaining freedom, gaining wisdom occurs because we travel on this journey and experience all these things and eventually get to the point where we're no longer pushed around by titanic forces. We make choices of our own and we define who we are in the world by those choices for the good. So I'm seeing in Paddle to the Sea by Holling Clancy Holling. I highly recommend the story. It's a similar story to the story of Pinocchio. It's a similar story to the story of Prometheus uh, and, and Seizing Fire. And it's a great story for, for talking about nobility and honor and choice and the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell. I highly recommend it. Holling Clancy Holling, Paddle to the Sea. Thank you.